Hello everyone, iSchoolTech here, back with a brand new video. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at how iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 5 has been running on the iPhone SE. Before we get into today's video, if you happen to be new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all the latest news, announcements, and of course updates from Apple, as well as reviews, tutorials, and more from iSchoolTech. Every subscriber I get truly does mean a lot, and it's very appreciated. Let's see if we can hit 1,000 subscribers before June 3rd. Anyway, let's get right into the video iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 5 released just a week after the fourth developer beta. iOS 13.4 brings many new improvements as well as a couple of new features such as iCloud folder sharing. It also hints at a possible OS recovery for iOS and iPadOS. In case you missed it, you can check out my full overview of the new features in iOS 13.4 using the iCard right here or the link in the description down below. I've been running iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 5 on my iPhone SE for a little while now and I should take a second to mention that the iPhone is holding a maximum battery capacity of 92%. Now the device has had a few random restarts and I've manually disabled performance throttling in settings as you can see right here. This means that Apple is not decreasing my phone's performance to save battery life and prevent restarts. With that said, let's talk about general performance. General performance has been the exact same as Beta 4 on Beta 5. There has been no noticeable increase or decrease, apps launch at the same speed, web pages load at the same time, etc. Now this is good news as Beta 4 had great performance. I have run a Geekbench 5 benchmark and as you can see right here, iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 5 scored a single core of 550 and a multi core of 1036. Now as you can see right here, iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 4 it got a single core of 546 and multi core of 1019. So it has been slightly improved on both. However, in reality, you really won't notice a difference this small. However, it's nice to have a reference. Animations have also been just as buttery smooth as in iOS 13.4 Beta 4 in Beta 5, on the iPhone SE of course. Animations such as swiping to access the control notification centers, opening and closing apps, scrolling through the home screen, and web pages have all been extremely smooth. I see no stuttering when doing any of these tasks. Now that is great and let's hope it stays like that. Battery life has been quite a bit improved in beta 5, however only with standby time. In iOS 13.4 beta 4 I had noticed a drain of 9 to 11% overnight, however in beta 5 I noticed that it has decreased to around 7.9% overnight. This still isn't as good as some earlier betas of iOS 13.4, but it's still just fine. As for on-screen time, I cannot say the same. I've noticed a pretty significant battery drain on my iPhone SE while in beta 5. This was not present in iOS 13.4 beta 4. For me, it started to go down by 2s, but after a minute or so, it just goes down by 1s, but fairly quickly. I could sit here and just watch the percentage drop. Hopefully this is fixed in a future release. I know I keep saying this, but it's true. My experience with iOS 13.4 has been great throughout all of the betas. This is by far the most stable iOS 13 version yet, and I'm very excited for a full release later this month. Speaking of which, when should we see the 6th developer beta of iOS 13.4 or even the full release? I'd expect about one or two more betas, of course, one of which will be the GM or Golden Master copy. The GM copy is identical to the full release. Now, I'd expect to see a beta 6 or possibly the GM on Tuesday 17th of March. Should you update? If you're on an earlier version of iOS 13 and you are okay with installing beta firmware on your device, then I'd say go for it. If you're on an earlier version of iOS 13 and you're not sure if you want to install beta firmware on your device, I'd say definitely wait for the full release of iOS 13.4. I'd actually recommend waiting about a week after the full release just to see if any major bugs are reported. Now, if you're still rocking iOS 12 or earlier, I'd say this is a good time to update. Now you may notice battery drain, performance decreases, and some other issues, and if you choose to update, just keep, in, keep that in mind. But if you can stay on an older version such as iOS 10, iOS 11, and iOS 12 without any issues, I'd say definitely stay there. Now of course I'll have a full review of iOS 13.4 developer rate of 5 on the iPhone 7 coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. Alright everyone, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy the video or found it helpful in any way, show me by leaving a like, and if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber really does me on, it's very appreciated. Don't forget to check out the iSchool Tech official Discord, link in the description down below as always. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.